Hi, welcome to Garden Web University Radio. This is a movie spotlight. This is Cinema Scene and Blindside Movie Reviews. Dun, dun, dun. Two in one. Two in one. Uh, Jay, uh, our uh, blind film critic, is taking the week off. He's taking some vacation time. So uh, Jeff Powell and I are spending time talking movies. And so to, if you're tuning in for Blindside, yep, it's that. And if you're tuning in for Cinema Scene, <laughs> it works. It works that way. As well, uh, if you do want to find out what's happening in the world of Jay, you can go to blindsidereviews.com, check out all of his reviews there, or go to his Facebook page and interact. He may be on one of those all. Florida beaches. He might be. And, and uh, you know, if Jay's wearing sunglasses, Jay always wears sunglasses. Oh, there you so, go. So there you go. Uh, weekend box office, Jeff Powell. Let's talk a little bit about uh, movies and what's happening uh, in the, the world of cinema. Uh, last weekend, um, Transformers... Opened uh, Transformers the last night. Poorly. Is, is the fifth in the franchise. Fifth in the franchise. Um, and uh, number one at the box office, which you oh, would expect. I thought it might might have not done that. Uh, but the lowest ah, of the franchise. I knew there was bad news in there somewhere. Yeah, $45 million uh, against a $217 million budget. Um, but this is a movie that will do well and play well overseas. China. Uh, opening weekend, $123 million or something, and it's already made its money back if you factor in overseas. Uh, Michael Bay, the director, was interviewed. I saw um, uh, some of the quotes that came out of the interview, and he said, you know, we're no longer making these films for domestic, for U.S. audiences. Wow. Uh, we, we know what will work overseas. We know that's where our money is. And we've talked about this on the show, that that global market is much more important, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and that's the case. So uh, this film will not be our number one domestic film for the summer. Uh, a film that will that may end up doing that um, right now, the one that's going to be the one to beat, uh, Wonder Woman still holding really strong after four weeks, uh, still number two at the box office. Um, it has now surpassed Batman v Superman uh, with a domestic total of $318 million. Worldwide, uh, Wonder Woman has brought in $652 million in four weeks. Uh, so this may be the summer film to beat. Right now, uh, it's got to catch up with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which is just shy of $400 million, but Wonder Woman will do that. Now, uh, opening next weekend, we'll talk about it uh, coming up as Spider-Man Homecoming. And so depending on just how well that does, uh, that, could, that could be the one to beat. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've had a lot of our big blockbuster films um, looking at that list of what's left in the summer. Um, Dunkirk, um, yeah, is, is coming, coming out, um, a Christopher Nolan war film mm-hmm. that could do well, but I don't see that being major box office numbers like these. No, but, uh, but yeah, there you go. Uh, Transformers, uh, my take on it. You can hear my little feel, my, my, my sure. spill. What'd you think? <clears throat> you know, if you're looking for something that's really uh, got a deep thought provoking plot, <laughs> uh, classic, uh, filmmaking, uh, that you may not forget, um, eh, stay away from this. This is not that film. This is not that film. Uh, Transformers The Last Night. Uh, way too many subplots in this. Um, overused uh, attempts at, at uh, simplistic humor. Uh, things were telegraphed. Uh, hordes of action sequences with really uh, little effect even further the narrative. Uh, you know, it, story, it's another global extinction event. <clears throat> And um, I wish that that would be the extinction of this franchise <laughs> because uh, it, it was just it was bad. Uh, it was a really bad film. Uh, D plus is wow. my rating for this. Yeah. Uh, I did laugh four times. And, um, and that's what got it to plus. Yeah. And, and uh, I will say one of those times I wasn't supposed to laugh. <laughs> but uh, I did find myself waiting for this movie that was way too long uh, to end. Wow. Um, it was it was pure mindless escape, and uh, it, you know if you really want to go see wall to wall action, which was there, uh, I wouldn't spend my money on this one. Okay, there's e- easily a dozen other films that are better at mindless action than okay. this. All right, um, and and this is just not Noel T. Manning the second, the critic talking. Uh, I was there with my son, who is a, a teenager, and my wife, who loves action films, and and all three of us were very much in agreement that this was not a good film. Wow. Um, 30 minutes into it, I, I really said to myself, I'm like, you know, this is going to be a long film, and uh, I don't really care where it goes. I need to get up and go get some popcorn. Yeah. My son Thomas, 
He said, Dad, he says, if, if I'd gone alone, I would have left. Wow. So so that's uh, Transformers The Last Night, a D-plus uh, for my rating for that. Now, another film uh, that's open now, just in theaters this weekend, uh, is really a great film. Uh, stylistically, the movie Baby Driver is one of the most unique films I've seen in quite a while. Uh, Edgar Wright was the writer, uh, also the director for this. Uh, he did Ant-Man last year, which was a mm-hmm. success yeah. and a lot of fun. Uh, at the box office, uh, Kevin Spacey in this film, along with Jamie Foxx uh, and John Hamm from the uh, Mad Men TV series. Mm-hmm. Um, um, it's a it's a crime infused film. It's a heist uh, heist kind of film where you've got Kevin Spacey as a kingpin of crime uh, of all these heist and robbery jobs, and he works with a different crew every time he does a job, except um, he has the same driver. Ah, the getaway driver. Uh, the getaway driver has okay. been the same for we don't know how long. Um, all we know is at some point, you know, Kevin Spacey's character says he's been my getaway driver since he could see over the steering wheel. And so we know that this, this guy's been doing it since he was a kid. He's still a kid. He looks like he's maybe 20. Mm-hmm. We don't really know age, right, what he is. Right. Uh, we do we do get a sense of this the backstory of this kid, but this kid is um, – really kind of grown up in this life of crime and the story question that kind of leads the film is will baby driver find a way out of this life of crime okay he's indebted to uh, kevin spacey's character and we discover why okay um, but i'm not giving anything away right. the, in the first 15 minutes all of these questions are starting to be asked uh it's a a, a really a, a if you like car chases if you like great stunts uh, you will enjoy this film. If you like uh, unique shot perspectives, you will enjoy this film. If you like uh, humor, uh, you will enjoy this. Uh, a lot of action, a lot of violence. Uh, it is an R-rated film. It's got some language. But uh, one of the things that I, I particularly l- loved about this movie, Baby Driver, was that it, uh, its use of music as a supporting character and oh, lyrical wow. music as a supporting character. Uh, the lead character, Baby Driver, has uh, this disorder uh, tinnitus. Mm-hmm. I can't say that right, but it's the, the ringing in the ears, the ringing in his ears where he hears this kind of humming ringing all the time. Mm-hmm. And so in order to uh, live in this world with that, he listens to headphones. He has an iPod for almost every day in every situation. So he has different iPods. And so he's listening to different types of music mm-hmm. and music and the lyrics of the music play a very, very key role in this film that's interesting and many times you're seeing it and hearing things from the movie through his perspective visually Mm -hmm. and audibly and that is unique and that's a tough thing to do and it was done quite quite well um this is one of my favorite films of the summer uh definitely a different kind of film uh, for the summer but uh a lot of depth for characters and situations I, i i i absolutely loved this as a surprise uh, didn't didn't know a whole lot about it. I'd read things about it, but uh, when I went to see it, I, I walked away going, "Wow, uh, I'm blown away." Um, there's an opening title sequence that is done with one camera, and uh, the the video choreography or the cinematography for that is just spot on. I always love and, that when it's done well. Oh, it is perfect. I gave this an A, a solid A rating uh, for this, and so. Uh, that's what I have for this week as far as movie reviews. I will say about Baby Driver that I'm glad to hear your review of it because just based on the name and, right. and the trailer that I've seen, I'm like, I don't, I don't, that, it doesn't sound good. Right. Yeah, baby yeah. Driver. It sounds, because you know, what, a few months ago there was Boss a, Baby, a Boss Baby, yeah, this yeah, animated, animated thing. Yeah. And that's kind of what it puts me in mind yeah, of. Exactly. So I'm glad to hear. Yeah. This is not Boss review. Baby Driver either. So it's, a, it's <laughs> not that. It's not a sequel to Boss Baby. Uh, other films opening in theaters this weekend. You can also check out the comedy The House uh, with Will Ferrell, um, Despicable Me 3, uh, and Amityville, The Awakening. Uh, all of those are opening uh, in wide release uh, this weekend. And in select theaters, uh, there's a film with Nicolas Cage, Gina Gershon, and Faye Dunaway called Inconceivable. Um, select theaters and also on demand. It's one of those that you can you can watch at home or you can watch in theaters at the same, same time. time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a cross between Fatal Attraction and The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, where uh, a, a nanny is hired to take care of kids and ultimately become a surrogate for future kids. And um, 
chaos, marital strife, and everything else you can imagine ensues. Uh, and that's called Inconceivable, and that is opening uh, as well. Um, have not been able to screen that, so can't give you any, uh, any more details about that movie. Um, and if you're looking for um, movies um, in other theaters, uh, the Don Gibson Theater's got movie specials every week. Uh, this week, you can check out the animated film Storks. That's July 6th. Uh, at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m., um, and I think it's a dollar to get in. Yeah, something like um, that. Yeah. And either drinks are free or popcorn. I think drinks are a dollar and popcorn's free. Uh-huh. So uh, for two bucks, you get a movie and movie and a you know popcorn. That's quite a so, bargain. Yeah, that's July 6th, the movie Storks, and then uh, just as a reminder, coming up July 26th through 29th in Kings Mountain at the Joy Performance Theater, we've got the Real to Real Film Fest. Uh, and in a couple of weeks, we're going to have Violet Arth Dukes uh, in here on Cinema Scene to talk about that. Awesome. So uh, that's my list of uh, things to talk about today. Any comments or questions you've got? I'm thinking about going to see Baby Driver. Okay. Yeah, I think you'd enjoy it because it's a bit different. Yeah. So just uh, like me, just like you. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, that is at Cinema Scene USA. Um, check us out there. Interact with us there. You can also go to the Cinema Scene Facebook page and. Um, Always you can go to WGWG.org and link to all of our various and sundry ways of communicating with you. Whatever sundry means. And you can communicate with us. Uh, Until next time, that's Jeff Powell. I'm Noel Manning. This is Cinema Scene on Gardner-Webb University Radio, WGWG.org. That's a wrap.